Les Roy Williams. I have here with me the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, who is Leader of Government Business in the National Assembly of St. Kitts and Nevis. Today was the first sitting of the National Assembly for 2017, for the new year. And today, the Speaker, of course, attempted to give a ruling or gave a ruling on the motion of no confidence that was filed against him on the 13th day of December 2016, the last sitting of the Parliament for 2016. However, that did not go down well with the opposition who stormed out of the Parliament, but before that created a lot of chaos in the Parliament with respect to the Speaker's ruling. Honorable Minister, you are leader of government business. How did you view today's proceedings? What took place? Thank you, Mr. Williams. And first of all, let me say a Happy New Year to all of the viewers um, of SKNIS and Z Radio and Television. You know, I hold a view that the opposition wanted to get out of this motion of no confidence. I really don't believe they wanted this motion of no confidence heard. I think they came today to cause confusion. Now, I sum it up this way. The problem I see them facing, that's facing all of them, is simply this. During the time they were in office, they never paid attention to the rules of the parliament. And even someone like the Honorable Marcella Lyburn, who used to be a speaker of the parliament, she too seems to be ignorant of the rules. And that is the challenge that they have. The rules are kind of foreign to them. Do you believe it is ignorance or rather political expedience? Well, I think part of it is ignorance. Mm -hmm. I, and I'll tell you why. You see, I for one have seen the motion and I don't believe that Dr. Douglas drafted that motion. Some juvenile mind, some lightweight drafted that motion and brought it for him to sign and he signed it without even reading it. That is what I think, because I cannot conceive that his mind, the mind of Dr. Douglas that I think has, has been guiding us for 20 years, could have reduced itself to produce such a motion. Yes. Why do I, you say that? I don't say that. The first thing is, the motion is not properly captioned. It reads something like this, motion of no confidence in the Speaker of the National Assembly. Which National Assembly? Dominica's National Assembly? Trinidadian? He ought properly to have known that he should have headed that document, Resolution of the National Assembly of St. Kitts and Nevis, of a motion of no confidence in the Speaker. Then we know what you're talking about. It's not Dr. Douglas' re resolution when it reaches here, you know. Yes, the motion is moved by him. But once it is passed, it is a resolution of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And so that's why I said it, it could not have been prepared by him. Now the second thing is, that the motion, although it was not properly headed, uh, and you know sometimes when we're doing the bills, talk about, you know, um, section so-and-so forms part of the bill, the enacting sure. clause forms part of the bill, the, 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 um, the, the heading pass forms part of the bill. That's one of the reasons for having the things properly headed. And that's why it tells me that it was not drafted by Dr. Douglas. Now, the so-called so motion has 14 recitals, uh, Mr. Williams, mm -hmm. and, and four prayers. And if I can just quickly look at some sure. of them, for example. Sure. Let's take the first one. How could Dr. Douglas present a motion which in his first recital says, whereas the offices of Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly are enshrined in the Constitution of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, when he knows that for 26 months they reduced the Parliament to a useless instrument over a motion of no confidence. Who for for that, five though? years. What are you saying that you're repeating the words of some? I'm repeating the words of a former judge from, uh, from Dominica. Yes. And for five years, they denied the people of St. Kitts and this, 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 this nation and, and this, and this um, parliament. Mm -hmm. They denied the parliament a deputy speaker. And yet he comes in a resolution to say that it is enshrined in the Constitution. Well, didn't he know that when he was denying us a deputy speaker for five years? The second thing, the second recital speaks to authority and impartiality. Let me read it. Whereas 
the chief characteristics of the office of the speaker and deputy speaker in the National Assembly are authority and impartiality. If you have authority, you exercise your authority. Yes. So if the speaker has authority and exercises his authority, how do they then have contention with him exercising his authority? It's as simple as that. Well, they are accusing, as, as you know, that he is not conducting the affairs of the parliament in their favor. But he's not supposed to conduct the affairs of the parliament in anyone's favor, but in the favor of all. But what they are alleging is that the speaker is biased. Well, that's what they're alleging. Mm -hmm. But then let's look at it, right? Remember, the speaker has the authority. Sure. When you have authority, you exercise the authority. And you know the Bible on parliamentary procedure, mm -hmm. which is, and, I, and I'm going to speak to the one which was the last version which was issued, the 24th edition of, of, of May's, um, of May's Bible, I should say, on yes. parliament, on parliamentary procedure. It says at page 61 that Reflections upon the character or actions of a speaker of the National Assembly may be punishable by breaches of privilege. Mm -hmm. In other words, people are not supposed to go in public and speak about the actions of a speaker. It can be punished. If you go to the Privileges Act of the nation, there are, there are punishments. There are ways to punish people who are reflect upon the conduct of the speaker. Sure. So them going out in the public and casting aspersions and saying things about the speaker are punishable. It is, as, it is likened unto a judge sitting on the bench and some lawyer who thinks he's a hotshot mm -hmm. goes and says something about the court or the judge. He can be brought for contempt. It's as simple as that. But, but, let's, but let's, go, let's go quickly to recitals sure. four and, sure, three and sure. four. In fact, four and five. Recitals 4 and 5 imputes improper motive to the speaker. Hear what he says. The speaker, then as deputy speaker, exercises discretion. Now, is this discretion, you know? Mm -hmm. That the parli in the par parliamentary body is a debate to prevent the member. Now, that is improper motive. Once you impute improper motive, it violates section 43.5 of the rules of the House. And in the other section, it says... Um, the speaker, Michael Perkins, has embarked on a course of conduct stating, starting sorry, from the time he held office of deputy speaker that has given members of the House reason to question his impartiality as a result of his targeting. You're accusing the speaker of targeting. That is improper motive. The House cannot debate a motion that imputes improper motive. It is as simple as that. It is improper motive, clear, straight and clear. And then, I go, then of course, you go to recital number six. Can you imagine that in recital number six, they refer to something happening on the 27th of April 2015, when the first parliament was in May 2015? So even before parliament commenced, they are accusing the speaker of something which happened before parliament commenced. Oh. You see why I said that Dr. Douglas yes. did not write this? He could not have written this. But they did say... Uh -huh. very early, openly, in the parliament, that they do not support the speaker. Well, Even before he had begun his office. That as, is, as, as, that as, was, at the beginning of his office. That's right. Speaker. That was made clear by, I think, no, no, a person than Con the Honorable Congress Maynard, yes. when he spoke at the end well, of takes he, office. He, that is correct. And so before the speaker took office, they are... Uh, you know, they, they discredited they him. They showed, they, showed, they, showed they, they, they the contempt. Going, they were not going to support They showed him. the contempt for him. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and then we go on, right? I mean, all the way down your sections 7 and 8, recital 8, 9 says, let's listen to 9. The conduct to date has culminated. Culminated. Now, that word. <laughs> culminated. Ended. In the unprecedented and unmerited ruling of the speaker which resulted in suspension of Nigel Carty. Now, the word culminated means that's what they really want to talk about, yes. Nigel Carty's suspension. It had nothing to do with all that went on before. It's about Nigel Carty's suspension. And, and that's what they say, suspension. He was never suspended. Mm -hmm. He was never suspended. You know, have you ever looked at what suspension I, means? I know. And I know that Based he was asked to withdraw until the He was asked to withdraw. He was never suspended. Mm -hmm. So for them to make a decision 
based on the fact that they say he was suspended, is also improper. Because he was never, ever suspended. He was asked to withdraw. He was asked to withdraw. For, for what I, I see to be that standing order, yes. is that you're asked to withdraw and you come back the following day. Isn't that That's so? right. That's right. That's what you do. When, you, when you're asked to withdraw, you withdraw for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what it is. Yes. He was not suspended. So that was a, a misunderstanding by them. That's why it said that they do not understand the rules. Because if they understood the rules, they would not write that he was suspended. He was never suspended. One of the reasons why I said Dr. Douglas could not have prepared this document is simply because the document speaks to freedom of expression. If I'm holding up a placard, that's the expression. If I'm just doing something else which is not necessarily to do with speech, it is expression. I can express myself in many different ways. The parliament is not concerned with freedom of expression. This is here where you, you talk about freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. And so for someone of Dr. Douglas's caliber to put his signature on a document which speaks to freedom of expression in the parliament suggests to me that he had nothing to do with crafting it. Because if he tells me he crafted it, then it means we, have been due, we are dealing with a, a gentleman who, has already, who is really over the hill in terms of politics in this country. Simple as that. I could go on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's fought sure. with, with, with inaccuracies. I'm not even going to talk about the fact that they, they, they call the speaker Ma Michael Nigel Perkins. How can that even stand up in any... In any, in any mm -hmm. in, and even after amended, they still left, Nigel, left the word Nigel, my, the name my, Nigel, my, Nigel my, Michael Perkins or Michael Nigel Perkins. I mean, it, it got me so a little, you know, upset with them for saying that the speaker is Michael Nigel Perkins, even after amending or so-called amending the resolution. You know? And so, I mean, I think the speaker was absolutely right. Yes. The motion was out of order. And the motion had no right to reach the parliament in the state it was in. And I think the, the speaker conducted himself properly by giving a ruling and actually pointing to the various sections which it violates. And none of them can dispute that. Mm -hmm. None of them can dispute that. This, I must tell you again, and I must repeat this, they need to go and read May, Erskine's May, the Bible, because it does speak to the conduct of parliamentarians in the public square. If you're reflecting upon the conduct of the speaker, you could be charged. You could be charged under the rules that allows him the privilege. And there's a Privileges Act, sections two point, uh, cap 2.4. You go and read it, and you can see all that can happen to them when they conduct themselves in the way they're conducting themselves. I, I frankly feel Do you? that the speaker was very lenient with them today. Yes. Very, very was, lenient. Was. But, but let me ask you, Honorable Eugene. Yeah. Um, do you think that the opposition is intentional in what they do? I think they are. To create disorder. I the think house. they are. What I think is that they have been in the public trying to get public support for some time and they're not getting any support. Mm -hmm. And this kind of conduct is one to see if they could help to sway people to them because somebody is doing them something. No mm -hmm. one is doing them anything. They're right. doing it to themselves. Mm -hmm. They're doing it to themselves in this parliament by not understanding the rules and applying themselves according to the rules. And I, for one, if I was a speaker, today, I believe all of them would have been named. Yeah. All of them would have been named. They were grossly out of order, gross misconduct today. But the, the, public, the public is viewing, and the public, of course, yeah. they will be judged in the public court. Right. Is but, there anything else that you want to say? But just, just to repeat, right, a few things. That, the, you know, sections 4 and 5, I should say recital 4 and 5, imputing proper motive, and there's no way that you can allow a member to sit in the parliament and in his normal presentation and imputing proper motive, never mind mm -hmm. to bring a resolution, a motion yes, which imputes yes. improper motive. Sure. That cannot be entertained. And so the speaker is absolutely right. You can go back and look. I don't think it was properly headed. I think that it shows that Dr. Douglas himself did not prepare it, that it was some kind of juvenile mind that worked on this mm -hmm. and put it before him for his signature. It was his and I more believe that what happened in parliament today was intended to get them out of Parliament rather than debate a motion with so many faults. <laughs>
Okay. That's what I think it is. Sure. Well, Honorable Eugene, I, I want to thank you so much yeah. for, for sharing with us today yeah. on such, how must I put it, an incident that took place on the first sitting of Parliament for the year. Well, you know, this, I, I appreciate... The Speaker said, he hopes, does not set the precedent for what is to come in 27. You will notice how emotional I am about this thing, you know, because really and truly, it is the wrong message to send to the youth of our nation, yes. the way they conduct themselves in Parliament. These are supposed to be the people who they expect youth to look up to them and the way they conduct sure. themselves. And come in the, in the Parliament, a branch of government headed by the Speaker, and behave as if they have no, to use some words from my, my fellow colleague Patches, no brought up seat. Well, they're following the leader. Yeah, they're following the leader. I think that, 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 that is a good way to characterize it. They're following the leader, and the leader is not going in the right direction. Right. <laughs> thank you for having me. Well, thank you very much, yeah. Honorable Eugene. All right.